From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Welcome back to the Cube's coverage of the AWS Startup Showcase. The next big thing in AI security and life sciences. Feature Ahana for the AI Trek. I'm your host, John Furrier. Today we're joined by two great guests, Stephen Me, Ahana, CEO, and Sacha Nayar, Securonics CEO. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the Cube. We're talking about the next gen technologies on AI, open data lakes, et cetera. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us, John. Thanks, John. What a great lineup here. Hi, Steven. Uh, great, great stuff. Sacha, Thank let's you. get in and talk about uh, your company. Securonics, what do you guys do? Take us through, I know you got a slide to help us through this. I want to introduce your stuff first and jump in with Steven. Absolutely. Um, thanks again, Steven, um, Ana team for uh, having us on, this, on, the, on the show. So Securonics, we started the company in 2010. We are the leader in security analytics and response uh, capability uh, for, the cyber, for the cyber market. So basically this is a category of solutions called um, SIM, Security Incident and Event Management. We are the quadrant leaders in Gartner, um, you know, have over 500 customers today and uh, have been plugging away since 2010. Um, started the company, just really focused on analytics using machine learning and, uh, and advanced analytics to, uh, to really find the needle in the, in the haystack, then move from there to needle in the needle stack using more algorithms, uh, analysis of analysis, and, um, and then kind of, you know, ev evolved the company to, to run on cloud as, um, and, uh, and become sort of the biggest um, security data lake on cloud and provide all the analytics to help companies with their insider threat, cyber threat, cloud solutions, application uh, threats emerging internally and externally, and then response and have a great partnership with Ahana as well as with AWS. So looking forward to this session. Thank awesome. you. I can't wait to hear the news on that next gen SIM leadership. Steven, Hanna, talk about what's going on with you guys. Give us the update, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, great to be here. And thanks for that, Sachin. And we appreciate the partnership as well with both Securonix and AWS. Ahana is the open source company based on Presto DB, which is a project that came out of Facebook and is widely used, one of the fastest growing projects in data analytics today. And we make a managed service for uh, Presto easily on AWS, all cloud native. And uh, we'll be talking about that more during the show. Really excited to be here. We believe in open source. We believe in um, uh, all the, the challenges of having data in the cloud and making it easy to use. So uh, thanks for having us again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to digging into that managed service and why that's uh, been so successful. Looking forward to that. Let's get into the uh, Securonix uh, next gen sim leadership first. Let's share the journey uh, towards what you guys are doing here. Obviously open data lakes on AWS has been a hot topic. Um, the success of data in the cloud, no doubt is on everyone's mind, especially with the edge coming. It's just, I mean, it's just incredible growth. Um, take us through Sacha, what you guys got going on. Absolutely, thanks John. So, you know, I mean, you know, we are hearing about cyber threats every day, no question about it, right? So in the past, what was happening is companies, what we have done as uh, as enterprises is put all of our eggs in the basket of of uh, solutions that were, that were um, evaluating the network data. Uh, with cloud, obviously there is no more network data. Now we have moved um, into focusing, you know, on EDR, right thing to do on endpoint detection. But with that, we also need um, security analytics across on-premise and cloud, um, and you know, your other solutions like your OT, IOT, your mobile, bringing it all together into a security data lake and then running purpose-built analytics on top of that and then having a response so we can prevent some of these things from happening or detect them in real time versus, you know, waiting for for hours or, or weeks and months, which is, is obviously too late. So, um, you know, with some of the recent, you know, events happening around Colonial and others, we, we all know cybersecurity is on top of everybody's mind. First and foremost, slide. I also want to- Make sure um, slide one and, and uh, that's all based off on, on top of the data lake, right? This is- this Yes, is what absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, so before we um, before we go into on Securonics, I also want to, you know, congratulate everything going on with with, uh, with with new cyber initiatives with our government and just really excited to see some of the things that the government is also doing in this space to bring, to have stronger regulation and bring together uh, the government and the private sector. From a Securonics perspective, 
You know, today, you know, we have one third of the Fortune 500 companies using our technology. In addition, there are hundreds of small and medium sized companies that rely on Securonix for their cyber protection. So what, what we do is, is, um, is again, we are running the solution on cloud and that is very important. It is not just important for hosting, but in the space of cyber security, you need to have a solution which is not, so where we can update the threat models and we can use the, uh, the, intel, the intelligence or the intel that we gather from our customers, partners, um, and industry experts and roll it out to our customers within within seconds and minutes because the game the game is real time right in cybersecurity and that you can only do in cloud where you have the complete telemetry and access to these environments when we go on premise traditionally what you will see is customers were even thinking about pushing the threat models through their um, standard dev test uh, life cycle management right and which 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 is just completely defeating the purpose so in any event you know Securonix on the cloud brings together all the data then runs purpose-built analytics on it, helps you find, you know, very few. So, you know, we are, we are today pulling in several million events per second from our customers, and we provide just a very small handful of events um, uh, and reduce the false positives so that, so the people can focus on them. Their, their uh, security command center um, can focus on that and then configure response actions on top of that. So we can, we can take action for known, uh, known known issues and have you know intelligence in all the layers. So that's kind of what Securonix is focused on. Steven, he just brought up probably the most important story in technology right now, that's ransomware. More than, I mean, first of all, cybersecurity in general, but ransomware, you mentioned some of the government efforts. Uh, some are saying that the ransomware marketplace is bigger than some governments, uh, nation state governments. There's a business model behind it. It's highly active, it's dominating the scene and it's a real threat. This is the new world we're living in. Cloud creates the refactoring capabilities. We're hearing that story here with Securonix. How, how does Presto and, and, and Securonix work together? Because, I mean, I'm connecting the dots here in real time. I think you're going to go there. So take us through, because this is like the most important topic happening. Yeah, so uh, as Sachin said, there's all this data that needs to go into the cloud and it's, uh, it's all moving to the cloud. And there's uh, massive amounts of data, hundreds of terabytes, petabytes of data that's moving into the data lakes. And that's the S3 based data lakes, which are the easiest, cheapest uh, commodified place to put all this data. But in order to deliver the results that, that uh, uh, Sachin's company is, is, is driving, which is uh, intelligence on, on when, you're, when there's a ransomware possibility, you need to have uh, analytics on them. And so Presto is the open source project that is a open source SQL query engine for data lakes and other data sources. It was created by Facebook as <coughs> part of the Linux foundation, something called the Presto Foundation. And it was built to replace compl the complicated Hadoop stack in order to then drive analytics at very lightning fast queries on large, large sets of data. And so Presto fits in with uh, this open data lake analytics movement which has made Presto one of the fastest growing projects out there. What is an open data lake? Real quick for the audience who wants to learn on what it means. Is it means it's open yeah. source in the Linux foundation or open meaning it's open to multiple applications? What does that even mean? Yeah, open data lake analytics means that you, first of all, your, your data lake has open formats. So uh, it, it is uh, made up of say, something called ORC or Parquet. And these are formats that any engine can be used against. And that's, that's really great. Instead of having locked in uh, 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 data types, uh, data lakes can have all different types of data. It can have unstructured, semi-structured data. It's not just the structured data, which is typically uh, in your data warehouses. There's a lot more data going into the open data lake. And then you can, based on what workload you're looking to uh, uh, get benefit from, the, uh, the uh, insights come from that. And actually slide two covers uh, this uh, uh, pictorially. If you look on the, the left here on slide two, the open data lake is where all the data is pulling. And uh, Presto is the layer in between that and the insights, which are driven by the visualization, reporting, dashboarding, BI tools, or applications like in, in uh, uh, Securonix case. And so uh, analytics are now being driven by every company uh, for not just industries of security, but it's also for uh, every industry out there, retail, e-commerce, uh, 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 you name it. There's uh, healthcare, financials, 
all are looking at driving more analytics for their SASified applications, as well as for their own internal analysts, uh, data scientists, and, and uh, uh, folks that are trying to be more data driven. All right, so talk about the relationship now with where Presto fits in with Securonics, because um, I get the open data layer, I see value in that. I get also what we're talking about with the cloud and being faster with the data sets. So how does um, Sasha and Securonics and Ahana fit in together? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, so I'll tell you, we have two customers. I'll give you an example. We have two Fortune 10 customers. One is uh, has, moved, has moved most of their operations to the cloud. And another customer who's, which is in the process, early stage. The data, the amount of data that we are getting from the customer who's moved fully to the cloud is 20 times, 20 times more than the, than the customer who's in, the, in early stages of moving to the cloud. That is because the ability to add this level of telemetry in the cloud, um, this, in this case, it happens to be AWS, Office 65, Salesforce, um, and several other uh, Zscaler, et cetera, several other cloud technologies. But the level of logging that we are able to get, the telemetry is unbelievable. Uh, so what it does is it allows us to analyze more, protect the customers better, protect them in real time. But, it, but there is a cost um, and scale factor to that. Right, so like I said, when you are trying to pull in um, billions of events per day from a customer, billions of events per day, what the customers are looking for is all of that data goes in, all of data gets enriched um, so that you know it makes sense to a normal analyst and all of that data is available for search, sometimes 90 days, sometimes 12 months. And, and then all of that data is available to be brought back into a searchable format uh, for up to seven years. So, so think about the amount of data we are dealing with here. And, um, and, and we have to provide a solution for this problem at a price that is affordable to the customer and that a small size, a medium sized company as well as a large organization can afford. So after a lot of our analysis on this, and you know, again, Securanix is focused on cyber, bringing in the data, analyzing it. So after a lot of our analysis, we zeroed in on S3 as the core bucket where this data needs to be stored because the price point, the reliability, and all the other functions available on top of that, right? And with that, with S3, we've created a great partnership with AWS as well as with Snowflake, right? That That is providing this um, from a data lake perspective, a bigger data lake, enterprise data lake perspective. So now for us to be able to provide customers the ability to search that data, so we data comes in, we are enriching it, we are putting it in, in S3 in real time. Now, this is where Presto comes in. In our research, Presto came out as the best search engine that to sit on top of S3. The, the engine is supported by companies like Facebook and, uh, and Uber, um, and, and it is open source. So, so open, open source, like you asked the question. So for companies uh, like us, we cannot depend on, on a very small technology company to offer mission critical capabilities because what if that company gets acquired, et cetera. In the case of open source, we are able to adopt it. We know there is a community behind it and, um, and that you know, it will be kind of available for us to use and, and we will be able to contribute in it for the long term. Number two, from an open source perspective, we have a strong belief that customers own their own data, right? Traditionally, like Steven used the word locked in, it's a key term. term. Customers have been locked in into proprietary formats in the past, and and those days are over, right? You should be you you own the data, um, and uh, and you should be able to use it with us and with other systems of choice. So now you get into a a, a data search engine like Presto, which which scales independently of the storage, and then when we start looking at Presto, we came across Ahana, right? So for every open source system, you definitely need a um, a sort of a for profit company. That, that invests in the community and then that takes the community forward because without a company like this, the community will die. So we are very excited about the partnership with Presto and Ahana and Ahana provides us the ability to take Presto um, and cloudify it or make the cloud operations work, plus be our conduit to the Ahana community, help us you know, uh, speed up certain items on the roadmap, help our team contribute to the community as well and then you know you have to take a solution like Presto. You have to put it in the cloud. You have to make it scale. You have to put it on Kubernetes. You know standard things that you need to do 
um, in today's world to offer it as um, sort of a, a, a microservice into our architecture. So in all of those areas, um, that's that's where um, our partnership is with Ahana and uh, and Presto and 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 S3. And we think this this is the this is the search solution of the for the future. And with something like this, uh, very soon we will be able to offer our customers 12 months of data um, searchable at, at extremely fast speeds at very reasonable price points. So, uh, and you will own your own data. So it has very uh, significant business benefits for our customers with the technology partnership that we have set up here. So very excited about this. Such a very inspiring couple things there. One, decentralize, own your own data having uh, democratized that piece is killer. Open source, great Absolutely. point. If the company goes out of business, you don't want to lose the source code or get acquired uh, or whatever. That's a key enabler. And then three, a fast managed service that has a commercial backing behind it. So, you know, a great, and by the way, you were going to Snowflake, wasn't around a couple of years ago. So, you know, like, yeah. so this is what we're talking about. This is the cloud scale. Steven, take us home with this point because this is what innovation looks like. Could you share why it's working, what's some of the things that people could walk away with and learn from as the new architecture for the new next gen cloud is here. So this is a big part of it, share how this works. That's right, as you heard from Sachin, every company is becoming data driven and analytics are central to their business. Uh, uh, there's more data and it needs to be analyzed at lower cost without the lock-in and people want that flexibility. And so uh, slide three talks about what a HANA cloud for Presto does, it's the best Presto out of the box. It gives you very ease of use for your operations team. So it can be one or two people just managing this and they can get up to speed very quickly in 30 minutes, be up and running. And that jump starts their movement into an open data lake analytics architecture. That architecture is going to be, it is the one that is at Facebook, Uber, Twitter, other large web scale, internet scale companies. And with the amount of data that's occurring, that's now becoming the standard architecture for everyone else in the future. And so uh, just to wrap, we, we really excited about uh, making that easy, giving it an open source solution because the open source data stack based off of data, uh, data lake analytics is, is uh, really happening. I got to ask you, uh, you know, you're, you've seen many waves of, of the industry. Certainly you've been through the big data waves, uh, Steve and Sachin, you know, you, you're on the cutting edge and just the cutting edge, billions of, of signals from one client alone is pretty amazing scale and refactoring that uh, value proposition is super important. What's different from 10 years ago when the Hadoop, you mentioned Hadoop earlier, which is, you know, RIP, obviously the cloud killed it. We all know that, everyone kind of knows that. Um, but like, what's different now? I mean, skeptics might say, I don't believe you. I mean, this is crazy, there's no way it works. S3 costs way too much. Where, why is this now so much more of a, an attractive proposition? What do you say to the naysayers out there? Well, Steve, we'll start with you and then Sasha, I want you to like weigh in too. Yeah, well, uh, if you think about the Hadoop era, and if you look at slide three, uh, it, it was a very complicated uh, uh, system that uh, was done mainly on-prem, and you'd have to go and uh, set up a big data team and uh, a rack and stack a bunch of servers, and then try to put all this stuff together. And uh, uh, candidly, the results and the outcomes of that were very hard to get unless you had the best possible uh, teams and invested a lot of money in this. Uh, what you saw in the slide was that that right hand side, which shows the stack. Now you have a uh, separated compute, which is uh, based off of Intel based uh, uh, instances in the cloud. We run the best in that and they're part of the Presto foundation. And uh, uh, it's, it's now data lakes. Now the, the, the distributed compute engines are the ones that have become very much easier. So the big difference and what I see is no longer called big data, it's just called data analytics because it's now become commodified, it's been easy and the bar is much, much lower. So everyone can get the benefit of this across industries, across organizations. I think that's good for the world. It reduces the, the, the security threats, the ransomware in the case of Conix and, and Sachin here, but uh, 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 every company can benefit from this. Sacha, and this is really as an example in my mind, I'll, and you can comment too on if you believe or not, but you know, replatforming at the cloud, that's a no brainer, people do that, they did it. The, but the value is refactoring in the cloud, right? It's thinking differently with the assets you have and making sure you're using the right pieces. I mean, it's no brainer, you know, if, it's, if it costs more money to stand up something than to like get 
value out of something that's operating at scales, much easier equation. What's your thoughts on this, you know, go back 10 years and where we are now, what's different? I mean, replatforming, refactoring, all kind of happening. What's your take on all this? Agreed, agreed, John. So, you know, we have been in business now for about 10 to 11 years. When we started, my hair was all black. Okay, I am. You're I am. I, I, yeah, okay, so uh, so uh, so this everything has happened here is the transition from Hadoop to uh, to cloud. Okay, this is this is what the result has been. So people can see it for themselves. Um, you know, so when we we started off with deep partnerships with the Hadoop uh, providers, and um, and again. I mean, Hadoop is is the foundation, right? Which has now become EMR and and everything else that um, AWS and other companies have picked up. But but you know, when you start with some basic premise, um, first the uh, the racking and stacking of hardware, companies having to project their entire data volume up front, bring in the servers, and and have you know 50, 100, 500 servers sitting in their data centers. And then when there are spikes in data, or like I said, as you move to the cloud, your data volume in, will increase between five to 20 X um, and projecting for that. And then and then think about the, the agility that it will take you three to six months to bring in new servers and then bring them into the, uh, into the, into the architecture. So that big issue. Number two big issue is um, that the, the, the backend of that was built for HDFS. So, so Hadoop in my mind, uh, was built to 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 ingest large amounts of data in batches, and then perform some uh, you know Spark jobs on it, some analytics, right? But we are talking in security about real time, high velocity, high variety data, right? Which has to be available in real time. It wasn't built for that, to be honest. So so what was happening is again. So even if you look at the Hadoop companies today, as they have kind of figured, you know, kind of defined their next generation. They have moved from HDFS to now kind of a cloud-based platform um, capability and, and, and have discarded the traditional HDFS architectures, right? Because it just wasn't scaling, wasn't searching fast enough, wasn't uh, searching fast enough for hundreds of analysts at the same time. And then obviously the, um, the, the, the servers, et cetera, wasn't working. Then when we worked with the, with the Hadoop companies, they were always two to three versions behind for the individual services that they had brought together. And again, when you're talking about this kind of a volume, you need to be on the cutting edge always of the technologies underneath that. So even while we were working with them, we had to support our own versions of Kafka, Solar, Zookeeper, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, to, to really bring it together and provide our customers this capability. So now when we have moved to the cloud, with solutions like EMR behind us, um, AWS has invested in um, in solutions like EMR to make them scalable, to have scale in and scale out, which traditional Hadoop did not provide because they they missed the cloud wave, right? And then on top of that, again, rather than throwing data in that traditional older HDFS format, we are now taking the same format, the Parquet format that it supports, putting it in S3, and now making it available and using all the capabilities, like you said, the refactoring of that is critical that rather than on-prem having servers and redundancies with S3, we get built-in redundancy. We get built-in lifecycle management, um, high high degree of confidence, data reliability, and then we get all this innovation from companies like from groups like Presto, companies like Ahana sitting on top of that S3, and uh, and and the last item I would say is in the cloud, we are now able to offer multiple have multiple um, resilient options on our side. So from for example with us. We will have, we still have some premium searching going on with solutions like Solar and Elasticsearch. Then you have Presto and Ahana providing majority of our searching, but we still have Athena as a backup in case something goes down in the architecture. Our queries will will spin back up to Athena, uh, an AWS service on Presto, and and customers will still get served. So all of these options, but but it doesn't cost us anything, Athena, if we don't use it. Uh, but but all of these options are not available on prem so in my mind uh, i mean it's a whole new world we are living in it is a world where now we have made it possible for companies to even enterprises to even think about having true security data lakes which are useful and having real time analytics for from my perspective i don't even sign up today for a large enterprise that wants to build a data lake on prem because i know that is not 
that is going to be a very difficult project to make it successful. So, um, so we've come a long way and there are several details um, around this that you know we've kind of endured through the process, but very excited where we are today. Well, we'll certainly want to follow up with theCUBE on, on all your, your endeavors. Quickly on uh, Ahana, why them? Why their solution in your, in your words? What would be the, the advice you'd give me if I'm like, okay, I'm looking at this. Uh, why do I want to use it? And what's your experience? Right, so practice yeah. standard. Yeah. A SQL query engine for data lake analytics. More and more people have more data, want to have something that's based on open source, based on open formats, gives you that flexibility, pay as you go, you <coughs> only pay for what you use. And so it proved to be the best option for Securonix uh, to create a, a self-service system that has all the speed and performance and scalability that they need, which is based off of the innovation from the, the large companies like Facebook, Uber, Twitter, They've all invested heavily. We contribute to the open source project. It's a vibrant community. We encourage people to join the community. Uh, and uh, even Securonix will be having engineers that are contributing to the project as well. Uh, I think, isn't that right, uh, uh, Sachin? Maybe maybe you could share a little bit about your, your thoughts on, on being part of the community. Yeah, so first, um, also why we chose Ahana, like John said, first, the first reason is you see Steven is always smiling. <laughs> okay, so that, He's that, great host, that is sure. very, <laughs> that is very important. You know, I mean, jokes, jokes apart, you need a great partner, right? You need a great partner. You need a partner with a great attitude um, because this is, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon, right? So the Ahana founders, Steven, um, the, the whole team, they're world-class, they're world-class. Um, the, the, the depth that the CTO has, uh, his experience, the, the, the depth that Deepti has, who's, you know, who's running the cloud solution, these guys are world-class. Um, they are very involved in the community. We evaluated them from a community perspective. They are very involved. They, they have the depth of, of really commercializing uh, an open source solution without making it too commercial right the the right balance where where the the founding companies like facebook and uber and hopefully securonix um, in the future as we contribute more and more will have our say and and they and they act like the right stewards in this journey and then contribute as well so um and and then they have chosen the right niche rather than taking portions of the product and making it making it proprietary they have now they have put in the, the effort towards the cloud infrastructure of making that product available easily on the cloud. So I think it was a no brainer from our side. Once we chose Presto, Ahana was the no brainer. Yeah. And um, and just the, the partnership so far has been very exciting and I'm looking forward to great things together. Likewise, uh, so thanks so much for that. And we've only found your team to be world-class as well and working together. And, and uh, we work, look forward to working in the community also in the Presto Foundation. So thanks for that. Guys, great Absolutely. partnership, great insight. And you know, really this is a great example of cloud scale, cloud value proposition as it unlocks new benefits, open source, managed services, refactoring the opportunities to create more value. Steven, Sachin, thank you so much for sharing your story here on Open Data Links. Again, open always wins in my mind. All right, thank you. This is theCUBE, we're always open and we're showcasing all the hot startups coming out of the AWS ecosystem for the AWS Startup Showcase. I'm John Furrier, your host, thanks for watching.